Welcome to a quick guide to commas from the Learner Development Service at Manchester Metropolitan University. Commas are one of the most problematic pieces of punctuation in academic writing, so we'll go over five main uses of the comma to help you check you're using them correctly. As I said, there are five main uses of the comma you need to be aware of. These are listing, the Oxford comma, joining, bracketing and adverbial. This guide will explain each of these commas with examples. Let's start with listing. When we have more than two items in a list, we should use commas to separate the items with the conjunctions such as and or or between the final two items in the list. For example, Manchester's most notable rivers are the Irwell, Irk and Medlock. A good way to check whether you have used listing commas correctly is trying to substitute them for a conjunction. If you can do this, then your listing comma is correct. The Oxford comma sometimes referred to as a serial comma, is an optional comma before the conjunction in a list. You only need to include the Oxford comma if the list would be confusing without it. Look at this example sentence. Elizabeth Gaskell wrote Cranford, Wives and Daughters and North and South. Without the Oxford comma, it is not clear whether there are three or five items in the list. In example two, the Oxford comma tells us to pause before the word and and helps us to see that these are separate items in the list. Elizabeth Gaskell wrote Cranford, Wives and Daughters, and North and South. To build fluency into your writing, and to demonstrate the relationships between your ideas, you can link your sentences together with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunctions are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. You can use the acronym FANBOYS to help you remember this. An example of this type of comma is Manchester was founded around AD 79 and it was originally called Mamukium. Do not forget to include your FANBOYS conjunction. If you join two sentences together without the conjunction, you have created an error called a comma splice. This is not a good idea in academic writing. For example, Manchester was founded around AD 79, it was originally called Mamukium. This is not correct. Bracketing commas are useful for adding additional details or background into your sentence. For example, Emmeline Pankhurst, born in Moss Side in 1858, was a leading women's rights activist. The two commas go around the extra information like brackets. You can usually hear where this extra information is located because your voice will change a little when you read it aloud. Emmeline Pankhurst, born in Moss Side in 1858, was a leading women's rights activist. To check you've got this right, you should be able to lift out the bracketed clause and the sentence will still make sense. For example, Emmeline Pankhurst was a leading women's rights activist. The adverbial comma helps to separate the main part of the sentence from a modifying word or phrase. These usually go at the beginning of the sentence to introduce it and can tell us time, location, reason or condition in a sentence or make a comparison or contrast with a previous sentence. For example, arguably vegetarianism originated in Manchester. The adverbial arguably gives us some context to show that it is a controversial point which some might argue with. Another example is, since the Industrial Revolution, the worker bee has been a symbol of Manchester. This adverbial gives us some more information about the time that something happened, or for how long it has been happening. You may wish to pause the video now and have a go at the activity underneath. In the document there are seven sentences without commas. For each one, decide where to place commas and try to figure out whether they are listing, Oxford, joining, bracketing or adverbial. We suggest that you spend about 5 or 10 minutes on this activity, but you can take as long as you need. Pause the video now to have a go, and when you are ready, press play to continue. Here are the answers. Number 1 uses listing commas to separate the different bands. Number 2 is bracketing, it's containing extra information and if we remove it, the sentence would still make sense. Number three is an adverbial comma. The first part is just giving us a little bit of extra context or background that puts the complete clause afterwards into fuller context or background. 
Number four joins two complete sentences together. Don't forget that there is a fanboy's conjunction there, the word but. Finally, number five is an adverbial. It gives us a little bit of extra context or background at the beginning, the word ironically. How did you do with these? If there are any that you struggled with, go back over the video and see if there's anything you missed or consider contacting the writing project for more support with punctuation. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it useful and can now start to apply what you learned to your academic writing. Check out some of our other videos and consider joining the writing project for one of our one-off workshops or more study skills support. Alternatively, use these contact details to get in touch and ask any questions you may have.